Welcome back to PSC's Sekbyte. First of all, let me remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk with you about the four customizer extensions introduced by Microsoft in SharePoint Framework version 1.15. With the form customizer extension, we can easily create custom forms to display, edit or add items to lists or libraries, including document sets. We can selectively choose what kind of forms we want to customize. And once we have developed, using the well-known development stack of SharePoint Framework, the custom forms for our target items, we can easily associate the forms to a target content type by configuring the properties for the component ID and component properties of the target form that we want to customize. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to play in action with this functionality. So, in order to create uh, a form customizer extension with SharePoint Framework, you need SharePoint Framework version 1.15 at least. And once you will execute the human generator for SharePoint Framework, you will have to choose a solution name, like always, and then you will have to select that you want to create an extension. And then it will say, OK, I want to create a form customizer extension. You will provide a name and this scaffolding will go through the creation of all of the needed files in order to provision your solution. I already did that in this sample solution that I'm going to show you. And here we are going to play with the SharePoint framework for customizer, which we will use to extend a list like this one in which we have one sample item and some custom fields like, for example, the numeric field, Boolean field and taxonomy field, as well as we have a library with the same, exactly the same custom field for the document and a library made of document sets where every single document set is still made of the same properties and custom fields just for the sake of simplicity. So let's assume that we want to customize this UI. Well, using SharePoint Framework, I created the form customizer and I've got back a new class in TypeScript which inherits from base form customizer. That is a new type introduced in SPFX 115. I can specify a set of properties to customize the form customizer. Right here we have the default one, which is just a sample text nullable string, but it can be whatever you like. Then in the onInit method, we simply initialize the form customizer. And what really matters is the render method, in which we do the actual rendering of our component, for example, using a React component. And in the onDispose event of this form customizer, we do the unmount of the React component. Now, inside my React component, I decided to use the dynamic form PMP reusable control that you can see covered in the PSC Stack Byte episode number 212. And through that component, we simply use the context property that we received as an input property for our React component and which maps to the context of the SharePoint framework form customizer so that in the dynamic form, we provide the context, we provide the ID of the list and of the item that we are going to display, edit, and if it is a new item, indeed, we will not have a new ID, we will just have a list ID. And we can read those information still from the context that we get in the properties of our React component through the list.guid property and through the item ID property. Then just for the sake of completeness, we have customized the on cancelled on before submit or submit error and on submitted events. And again, you can watch episode 212 to see how the dynamic form works. And just by doing that, we will have a really simple and basic implementation of a customized form for our list item or our document or our document set. In order to make it work properly in the serve.json file, we need to configure all of the different options that we want to support for debugging purposes using Gulp Serve. And here, for example, the default one will target our site, our demo site, in the spListform.aspx file. 
we'll use the component ID, which is precisely the ID that we have in the manifest of our form customizer component right here. And then we can specify what kind of page we want to render. It can be the display one, can be the new form, can be the edit form, or can be the add new form. And depending on the flavor of form that we want to render in the bug, we can specify the root folder of the list that we want to target and eventually the ID of the item that we want to edit or that we want uh, to view. So by doing that, here we have a configuration for the list, targeting the URL of the list. We do the same for a library and we do the same for a library with document set. So that we can then say gulp serve and we can specify the configuration that we want to use. So, for example, if we want to see the edit form for the list, we can say this is the config we want to use. It will take a while to build uh, the solution and make it ready. And now that we are ready, we can see that we need to allow the bug scripts in order to run in the bug the solution. And we will be able to see the form to render our item Right here, it is loading, and in a matter of few seconds, we'll be able to see the form in action. And here we are. Here we have the form. We are editing the very first item that we have in our list. And as you can see, if I will update this numeric value, for example, from 25 to 30, and I will change the term selected right here with Microsoft Viva, and I will save my item, I can go back to my list, and I will see that automatically, or by refreshing this page, we will see the updated value for the taxonomy field and the updated value for the numeric field. Now we can do the same for the library, where we have one document with this property. So let me stop the uh, Gulp server and let me change the target uh, configuration. Let me use the lib one. So run it again. It will take a bit to rebuild everything and become ready. And then we can play with the new uh, target context, which will be the one of the document library. Still allow the bug scripts. It will take a little bit to load the page and the uh, dynamic form. And then we will have the form to edit our document in the document library. And here we are. Again, this is the document. We can update with 32, we can disable the boolean field and we can save. And again, we can go back to the document library, we can refresh and we can see that now we have a new value and we disable the boolean field. Last but not least, we have a document library with a document set. And again, we can stop, we can run again the solution with gulp serve and right now we will use the configuration for the document set. So doc set one, still for the edit form. And we will see how we can edit a document set properties still using the same technology. Like always, we enable the debug scripts. Takes a while, we get the form and we can edit the properties, the metadata properties of a document set. And here we are again. This is the document set. We have value of 15 in the numeric field as well as a boolean and SharePoint online we can change it we can change SharePoint online to let's say Viva and we can update 15 to 20 and we can save and if we go back we can refresh this page and see that the document set got updated so by using the dynamic form Together with the form customizer extension, we can easily build such kind of customized experience. Once you are ready, you can associate your form customizer to a target content type. In order to do that, for example, using PMP PowerShell, you can get a reference to a target content type and you will have the display form client side component ID and the display form client side component properties to configure the display form as a customized one with SharePoint framework. And you can do the same for the edit and for the uh, add new forms so that you can selectively choose what 
forms you want to customize using SharePoint Framework. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.